thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under 5 minutes a day. Today we continue in covering meteorology and weather theory. We cover thunderstorms and microbursts. In order for a thunderstorm to form, there must be some pre-existing conditions. Things must be wet, rough, and sucky. By this, I mean that the atmosphere must have sufficient moisture, must be unstable, and the unstable air must then experience an initial upward lifting moment, otherwise known as an updraft, to set things in motion. These updrafts are often provided by surface heating, winds being pushed up sloping terrain, converging winds, or any combination of these. Thunderstorms have three stages of their life cycle, the cumulus, mature, and dissipating stages. These stages have no obvious visual indicators, and a thunderstorm may be a cluster of multiple cells all in different stages of their life cycle. The cumulus stage of a thunderstorm is characterized by updrafts extending from the surface to the cloud top. The growth rate of a thunderstorm may be up to 3,000 feet per minute. During this stage, the cloud grows and eventually water droplets within the rain cloud grow too. We enter the mature stage as these water droplets fall, dragging along cool air. The consequence of this rushing cool air is downdrafts. The mature stage of a thunderstorm is characterized by precipitation falling and a combination of updrafts and downdrafts. These downdrafts may reach speeds of up to 2,500 feet per minute, and at the surface will spread outward from the point of contact. An extremely powerful downdraft is known as a microburst. More on that later. All thunderstorm hazards reach their greatest effect during the mature stage. The final stage of a thunderstorm's life cycle is known as the dissipating stage. Characterized by downdrafts, the storm dies rapidly during this stage. Once rain and downdrafts end, the dissipating stage is complete. Thunderstorms can range from 5 to 30 miles in diameter. Hail may fall for 20 miles surrounding the storm. This is especially true under the anvil of a thunderstorm. Pressure typically falls rapidly with the approach of a thunderstorm. In terms of lightning, the more frequent the lightning, the more severe the thunderstorm. Decreasing frequency may signal dissipation. Do not try to circumnavigate thunderstorms covering large areas visually or by radar, as thunderstorms build and dissipate rapidly. If you must fly through a thunderstorm, plan the quickest course through the storm and hold it. Recommended procedure to lessen aircraft stress is to disengage autopilot, keep your eyes on the instruments, and adjust power to the recommended reduced power setting. Because it is nearly impossible to maintain altitude in a thunderstorm, and structural damage may occur if the aircraft is forced to do so, maintain attitude rather than altitude, riding the waves of the thunderstorm. Microbursts, or those extremely powerful downdrafts we mentioned earlier, may occur anywhere that thunderstorms, rain showers, or virga, precipitation that evaporates before reaching the ground, occur. Rarely, microbursts may occur absent precipitation. A microburst itself is only a couple hundred to three thousand feet wide. When it reaches the ground, horizontal vortices spread out an additional six thousand to twelve thousand feet and may reach heights of two thousand feet. The typical lifespan of a microburst is between ten to twenty minutes after ground contact. The largest hazard associated with the microburst is during landing. On final approach at point X, the aircraft enters the headwind and involuntarily gains altitude. At point Y, the aircraft is violently forced downward, and at point Z, the sudden tailwind results in loss of airspeed potentially causing the aircraft to stall or to land short of the runway. It is important to note that some microbursts cannot be escaped with any known techniques, and extreme caution should be exercised in the presence of a microburst. This concludes today's video over thunderstorms and microbursts. I hope that it may help you to avoid any hazards associated with flight through or near thunderstorms. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope, if you've enjoyed the video, that you might like it, share, or subscribe to keep track of new videos. Feedback in the comments section is always appreciated. Thanks again, and safe flying.